across the southeast today, tops of 32 degrees, but a fine long weekend ahead. 32 the top for Australia Day, 32 on Sunday as well, then sunny 33 for Monday. It's another beautiful morning here on the Brisbane Bayside. The entire opening sequence to this video was filmed with this. This is the Nikon D3500. If you'd like to know how I did it, as well as the camera settings, plus some extra tips, let's go back to the office and I'll show you. Hi, Paul here from Photogenius, back in the studio and ready to show you how to take great video with your Nikon D3500. Now, if you're new to this channel, I post photography tutorials, tips, and occasional gear reviews, and sometimes I like to cover videography as well. So if you wanna learn how to get better results with your digital camera, please consider subscribing. This is the Nikon D3500, Nikon's current entry-level DSLR camera and a camera that I've really enjoyed using. I did a full review uh, video of this camera a few weeks ago featuring sample images. I'll put a link up here as well as the description below the video. But up until today, I hadn't had the opportunity to test out the video capabilities of this camera. So this morning I got up extra early just for you guys, shot the intro to this video, which I hope you enjoyed. And now what I wanna do is talk you through some of the video functions of this camera and share with you some of my favorite settings. So you can also go and take great video with the D3500. So I'm gonna start by taking you through the camera's basic video settings. To get to these, you need to press menu on the back of the camera. You need to be in the shooting menu and then you need to scroll all the way down to movie settings. Once you're there, press the OK button and let's start with frame size, frame rate. So here we can choose from several different options. I'm currently shooting at 1080, 24 frames a second, which gives you a nice cinematic feel. But if you wanna do um, some slow-mo, up it to 1080 at 60 frames per second. But the video that I shot today was shot at 24p. Next, we go down to movie quality. Only the two options here, high quality or normal. For me, this is a no brainer. I want the best quality possible, so I'm selecting high quality. So next down, we go to microphone settings. This affects the internal mic that is built into this camera. You cannot sadly connect an external mic to the D3500. My recommendation here is auto sensitivity, but you can also affect the manual sensitivity of the microphone by pressing OK and selecting the lower number to decrease how sensitive the mic is. You'll see it's not peaking so high or increase the number and you'll see it wants to peak at about 12 for the best signal. Press OK. Again, personally, I prefer auto sensitivity. There is also an option to turn the mic off. Wind noise reduction can be useful if you're shooting outdoors and there is a lot of wind. Um, I had this turned off because I wasn't using the mic, but I would recommend turning this on if you are shooting outside. And now manual movie settings. This allows you to manually change some of the settings when shooting a movie. Um, by default, it's usually set to off, but I would turn this on. Now to get into video mode or movie mode, you need to activate live view on the camera. Um, the viewfinder on the back of the camera is great for still photography, but when doing video, you need to use the LCD screen. To get into live view, there's a little button on the top of the camera here or switch marked LV, pull it towards you and you will turn on the screen and you are now in live view mode. Now, before I share with you my preferred video settings, may I remind you to follow me on Instagram where I post behind the scenes uh, images from my video productions, from my courses and photography workshops here in Brisbane. I'll put a link in the description below the video. 
So with Live View turned on, when you're recording a video, you may want to change some of the camera settings. This is where the I button comes in. On the back of the camera, there's a button marked with the letter I, let's just call it the I button. And this is really useful because you can use it to change some of the camera settings without having to go out of Live View and back into the camera's menu. Things like focus modes, ISO, white balance. Let me show you how it works. So with Live View turned on, what we're going to talk about now is the I button. Before that though, we need to press the Info button until you see this widescreen view, because now we are in the video mode. When you press the I button, the camera will display some of the key movie functions that we can change. The first one is quality. This refers to the quality of the image. We spoke about this just a few moments ago. I'm going to leave it at 1080p, 24 frames a second. Moving on to white balance, this affects the colors. So if we press OK, and if you watch carefully as I scroll down, you can select and change the uh, white balance, which will affect how the colors look in your image. My recommendation is to go for automatic white balance. But if you are shooting uh, at sundown or trying to get a nice sunset, then I would recommend the cloudy option, which is the one I used for the video. Next is mic, same as before. We now have options to select auto, manual or mic off, press OK. And next to that is ISO. Pressing OK allows you to increase or decrease the ISO, generally higher ISO in poor light, lower ISO for good light, default 200. Now with ISO, the higher the number, the brighter your image or your video will be, but at a price. When you increase the ISO, you will lose image quality. Your uh, video might start to look a bit pixelated or grainy. This is called digital noise and is best avoided. So my rule of thumb is ISO, keep it low. ISO 200 is generally my default. Moving on, we have the focus modes. Press OK and we have a choice of three AFS. AFF, which is full time autofocus, and then we have manual focus. Manual focus can be useful if your camera is struggling to focus on a subject, but can also be um, adjusted whilst you're actually filming. This is a technique known as pulling focus and can give a really cool effect to your videos. To do this, you select manual focus on the camera, grab the focus ring on the lens, and turn. Very easy. Don't mix up the focus ring with the larger zoom. And for added stability, if you're gonna do this, I recommend a tripod. Next, we have the autofocus area mode. Press okay, and once again, we have four options here. AF area mode is a particularly useful function of the camera because it allows us to tell the camera where or on what we wanna focus. Very useful. Let's start with face priority, as the name suggests. This mode will prioritize and focus on faces, but after testing it out, I found it to be a bit sluggish, and to be fair, isn't an, a uh, mode that I would recommend using. The next two, wide area and normal, these are really good because you can move the focus area around using the multi-selector tool on the back of the camera. Very useful. My preferred one here was normal because you get a smaller focus area, which means you can be more specific about where and on what you wanna focus on. Now the next mode is subject tracking, which is pretty neat. And to use this one, you need to have the focus mode set to AFF. Now, as the name suggests, this mode can track a subject. All you do is turn it on, move the focus square, the green square to your subject using the multi-selector tool on the back of the camera, and then, and this is important, press OK to register the subject. Now, if the subject moves, you don't have to move the camera because the camera will automatically track the subject. A pretty neat mode, to be honest. I did not use it for the video today, um, but definitely worth checking out if you like taking photos of kids, animals, or maybe sports events. Wind noise reduction is useful when shooting outdoors, so you can leave that on. Next up is picture control, which affects the colors, tones, and sharpness of your video. My recommendation for this is standard, which I found performs really well, but you might want to have a play around with this. Vivid is really good because of the name suggests um, it makes some of the colors more punchy and more vivid looking and more saturated. Uh, monochrome is cool if you want to do a black and white video. And the last one here is flat. Now this is a um, not one I'd recommend unless like me, you like to edit your videos in software like Premiere Pro. Um, 
Video shot in flat looks very flat and very dull, but you get a greater dynamic range, more detail in the shadows and the highlights, but to get the most from it, you really need to edit the image and do what is called color grading. And I wanted to test this out for myself, which is why I chose the flat setting for the video you saw earlier. But my recommendation for now, just go with standard. So now we've got the camera set up, we're pretty much ready to record. So you put the camera into live view and to record, you just press the red record button on the top of the camera. But before we get into this one, I wanna show you that once you've turned on the live view, you can change the way the screen shows information. And this is particularly important, I think. When using live view, you can press the info button to change the display. Now this is the screen you wanna see when you're recording a video. But to check your light, I recommend pressing the info button until you see this screen with the camera's light meter here in the bottom right. The plus side is um, if your image is too bright, the minus side is underexposed and you want to aim for the zero. Now, what you can do to adjust the light is change the settings. So this control here affects your shutter speed just here. And you'll see that as I turn the dial and change the shutter speed, I can affect the light. That's as far as I can go though. So to, have to get the uh, balance in the middle and get a decent exposure, I need to change the aperture or the ISO. I'm gonna change the ISO. But with ISO, you do have to turn the live view off to change it. You press I, go over to ISO, press OK, increase, press the button, go back to live view. To bring the exposure down, because it does look a little bit bright, I'm just gonna increase the shutter speed a little bit. There we go. Now we go back to the video view. Now, if you don't know much about manual and you find aperture, shutter speed and ISO confusing, then I've got a good tip for you. Try shooting your movie in the aperture priority mode. This is A on the dial on the top of the camera. And this is great because as you move the camera around, the camera will adjust the shutter speed in the background for you automatically so you get a nicely exposed video. But you do still have a level of control. There's a plus minus button on the top of the camera. If you hold it down and turn the dial on the back of the camera, you can adjust what is called exposure compensation. Holding the plus minus button, dialing to the right allows you to make your video brighter. Holding the button, dialing to the left allows you to make your video a little bit darker. Really cool feature, so check it out. Now with my exposure done, the next step is to press the info button and the screen changes once again. This time you get a black bar at the top and at the bottom of the screen, so you get a kind of widescreen view. This is good because it represents what you will actually record. And I like to record using this screen because that way I don't chop off things at the top and the bottom of the screen. And let me give you some more final tips. ISO, we've talked about it before. Once again, ISO keep it low is the golden rule. Unless you're shooting in really low light when you might need to increase it, don't. 200 is my default, and that way I don't get digital noise spoiling my video. Tripod, nobody likes shaky videos. If you're gonna do video, stability I think is really important. If you've got a lens with image stabilization or vibration reduction on the Nikons, use it. Better still, invest in a tripod, or at the very least, check out monopods. A monopod is like a single tripod leg. I used it for this shot. I put the camera on a monopod, I pulled the camera back while taking the video to give that nice smooth upwards pan. Very useful. Next tip, consider underexposing. We talked earlier on in the video about uh, exposure compensation. If you dial down and make your, um, your, your shot just a little bit darker, you will get more detail in the bright areas such as the sky. So consider underexposing your image slightly. And my final tip, consider buying a better or faster quality SD card. When doing a video, your camera is transferring a lot of information to the SD card and the faster cards will outperform the cheap cards any day. For recommendations, check out the links below the video. Oh, by the way, if you're interested in the settings that I use for the sunrise photo, here they are. With the camera in the manual mode, let's start with ISO. Remember, ISO, keep it low. I'm using 100. White balance, I'm selecting the cloudy setting to try and give me some nice orange colors in the sky. Exposure's looking a bit overexposed at the moment. F16 is a good aperture to give us a decent depth of field. Dropping the shutter speed down to 1 25th of a second and using a two second delay to help avoid shake. 
So I really hope you've enjoyed this video. If you did, give us a thumbs up and consider subscribing to my channel. To support my channel, why not share this video with others? You'll find a link below. Don't forget you can leave your comments, suggestions and questions down below as well. And I do read and try to answer every single one. I hope to see you again soon. See ya.